Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com with more on web components. So last time we looked, talked about how to create a web component. Um, there's still a couple more features that we should talk about when it comes to creating a web component. One is like things like lifecycle functions, meaning things that happen when the component renders versus when it disconnects. So for that, what's built in are two functions. There is connected callback. So the way it would work is you would just do connected callback and you would just define this function in the class and then what this would do is anything that's in here runs on the start of the component mounting so every time you run you create the component it will run this so what if I do console.log looky I'm running I am running <coughs> at mounting. Okay, so this is generally what you probably do like your API calls and stuff. And then there's disconnected callback. And this you just it runs when you remove the component. So the log. Okay, looky. I am run when the component leaves. Cool. <clears throat> now again, we included, if we go back to our index.html, we have this component that's run right here. What I'm going to do is I want to do a command to clear the body. So I'm going to do um, right over here, document.get or query selector body dot inner HTML equals blank and that should pretty much clear out all those nodes so what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna it's gonna look like a blank screen but at first you'll see it two console logs one from when the component was originally mounted but then it was immediately removed so then we'll see the disk console log here <coughs> get open the file As you can tell by my voice, I just woke up. Okay, so let's wait for a second for Chrome to open up. There we go. Okay, let's open up the inspector so you can see those console logs. And there you go. See, so looky, I'm running at mounting and looky I run when the component leaves. So those are your um, there's another one called adopted callback. I'm like I don't fully appreciate it. The idea behind the adopted callback is that if you move it from one document to another. And again the way I think about the document is the whole DOM is the documents, the whole thing. So when would you get a new document? Hmm. It's an interesting thought. But I've never had a need for that one. Then there's another one called uh, attribute changed attribute callback which what you can do is you can name attributes of the so I could sit there and actually label uh, something like user hello and then name that as an observed attribute so there's a function called like observe attribute that you put in the constructor that'll observe the attribute and then when you do that attribute whenever that attribute changes it automatically triggers this attribute changed callback. Um, I've never found a use for that. I usually just create my own manual set state function. And if I really wanted something to happen when the attributes change, I would create a similar set state like function for that as well. So how would you do that? Well, if you want a component that's going to like change on update, then you can't have a static template like this. So this, this, this is not going to work for us. So in that case, what we need to do is create like a ren what would be referred to in React as a render function. I used to refer to it as a builder function in my early component um, type things. So how would that work? Essentially, what you want to do is create a function. So let's call we'll call it const render. Actually, we don't even have to do it there. We can actually just do it in the actual class. So render 
okay and then you can pass in any d data you want to have available to you um, although technically since I have well, I don't really have any kind of particular data available to me right now so let's pretend we had state this dot state equals a property called hello I would do props but the manually show you how I set it up so you can capture the props is actually a bit more complicated um, because what you're doing is you're capturing the URL you're pars parsing out the URL and creating an object out of a string um, honestly at that point just download one of my libraries use the capture props function it works really well cool so let's see here inner HTML uh, well let's get rid of this render and what you basically what you do is that the render function will just return a template string so we'll say h1 hello we'll actually use this dot state dot hello Mm, and if you want to get rid of this, like if you, if you get annoyed by typing in this, the, what you can do is you do this. Pass in, pass in the state as a parameter, so then you can just do this. Okay? That's typically what I do. Because it's just... Not having to type this is nice. Okay, and then this returns this. So the cool thing about that is that every time you run the render function, it's going to re-render the template string. So in that case, if hello changed, it'll reflect the new change in hello. Okay. So now, this, what is it complaining about? Oh, there's nothing here. Well, we're going to basically, that's what we're going to fix now. So basically, what we're going to do at the point where we construct this component, it'll be like this.render, and then we're going to pass in this.state. Okay, but we should probably define state before we run that function. So let's put that right over here. Cool. Now, the issue now is that this still only runs when the component is initially put on the screen. So it works. Although it didn't print hello. So what did I do here? Uh, app. Oh, I didn't put world afterwards. Cool. Let's see, so this works. Not a bad deal. But we would like to do more. And notice that the slot components that I had in there earlier, they don't show up anymore because I don't have a slot tag in there. So again, just differences between when you do different things. So now, how can we make this like a set state function? Uh, let's get back to my here. OK, what we will do is we'll create a function called set state. And set state gets passed in the new state. And usually I'd first have it capture props, so that way it always gets if the props have changed, that's reflected as well. But since we don't have capture props available to us right now, because I didn't bring in any libraries. Um, and you can find capture props in pretty much all my web component libraries. I originally created it in Merced UI, but I use it in all of them because it's a great function and the cool thing about it is you can use it to grab the props of other components so you can do more complicated cool things with it um, cool set state so let's see here we set state so we pass in the new state and then we just uh, run render again so render so first we have to change the state so this dot state uh, equals new state so that way the state has changed. And then we run this.render with this.state again. Okay. Or you could have just run the render function. If I had used this here, then I wouldn't have to write this.state. But again, writing it once here, then I don't have to write it in my render function going forward, which I like. Okay. Cool. So now the component has state. Ta-da! 
And let's try that out. So let's see here. Let's make a button. And that on button's on click function. So it's be document dot query selector. It's gonna grab the first test test. And then we're gonna set state. And we're gonna set it to goodbye. Oh, actually no. We need to set the hello property to goodbye. So hello goodbye. Okay, and I think that wraps that up. So there's that. And then we'll say click me on the button. Slash button. And there we go. So now we have a button that when I click, it'll run that set state function we just created. And then when you click me, uh, what did I do wrong there? Let's see here, document dot query selector, test test dot set state. Let me just take a look at how I wrote set state dot here. Uh, oh, I need to pass in the new state. No, I did pass in the new state. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I don't think the function is running. So the way I test that out is I'm going to put a little console log here. YOLO. If I see the YOLO, then I know the function is running, which means there's a problem with the way I wrote the function. If I don't see the console log, then there's something with my, I'm not, I'm doing something wrong with invoking the function. So. Hmm, okay, so the function is running. Uh, so let's examine how this is working. So this dot state and this dot render gets pa this dot state gets passed into here. And then state dot hello. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, here we go. I have to do this. This dot shadow root because the way I did it is that I, the render function only returns a template string. So I was just creating a new template string without assigning it to anything. Shadow root, this dot shadow root dot inner HTML equals this. Okay, so that way the new template then replaces the old one. There we go. Okay, so let's refresh. And there it goes, see? And there I just updated the state and it automatically rendered the component. Okay, so creating the whole state thing is pretty easy. Now, if you understand how you could get props, like the hard way is you can just get the props you know will be there. So I so basically since I know we'll have this user property here, what I could do is this. Um, so this would be here. And then I think it's like this dot get attributes mm, let me google that it's been a while I've been heavily reliant on that capture props um, let's see here this dot I'll just say get attributes dom got get attribute yep method is to get the value uh -huh. I just want to make sure that I need to put in the attributes name as an argument. Just want to make sure. Uh, yep, that's what I thought. Okay. So yeah, you would do get attribute, and then you would put in user, and then that would work. Okay. The only thing is that you'd only be able to use the attributes you anticipate, and you always have to be doing this that got attributes thing. The great thing about um, the way I did it is that you could have keys that you don't know are going to be there because it's always going to be in the object, but you can create dynamic logic that plays on dynamic keys in different ways. Um, but again, it's a little bit more complicated to program. So again, if you want to do that, I would just use basic element, which is a class that I created in my libraries. It's less than one KB. It already has capture props and state built in. So you can just kind of work on, work on building your logic from there instead of having to worry about that logic. But again, you could do this. 
So that should grab the user property. So that first one has a user property. So it should say hello world. So when I go over here and I refresh, see the other ones say null because that attribute's null, which is another thing you have to watch out for when you're using the attributes because we'll come back null if it's not assigned. So how would you fix that? You could do this. I could be like, if that returns null, that returns something, then use it. If not, use um, state dot hello. Okay. And now all three of them say hello, but these two are getting the hello from state. This one's getting the hello from props. So that's how you could do it. Again, if you're only using a set amount of properties and you know what they are ahead of time, then yeah, this get attribute thing makes it pretty. This works. Um, cool. And then there's like a there's a way to get all the attributes, but it does it returns you a string, so then you have to parse the string. Um, do do get. But I just want to look it up so that way you guys have it. Get oh. Uh, element attributes. Hmm, nothing there. Okay. There we go. It's a property called element attributes, and it gives you a string of all the attributes. Do 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 do. And then they start getting into how you can use it. But let's just console log that. Um, console.log this dot attributes okay and that's right over here okay oh okay so yeah so it wasn't as complicated as I remember so this does return you an object but notice this is not a normal object okay so you can't really work with this in the in, in, in the way you'd be used to so what I do in um, my capture props function is I take this, I use a spread operator, and that way you have it as a standard object. Um, yeah. Because technically the way it works, so right now, if I go to user, see it gives me all this information. I don't need all this information. Um, so it gives you like the, the key, the values. So what I did is I just go in this, I map over this, um, and then create an object by taking the name and the value, making that key and value, using object.entries to then generate the object, or from entries. So if you wanted to manually do it, that's how you would do it. Um, but why, when I've already done it for you? Okay, but that's pretty much the rest. Again, that's how you create dynamic templates that change as the data changes. That's how you create a function that, that would change the data at the same time as render re-render the function and you can create you know if you want to you can create a change props function that allows you to change your props and add and subtract attributes and re-renders the function you can just do whatever you want and you can pass in more than just stay you can pass in all sorts of stuff um and then there's these are the lifecycle functions connected callback and disconnected callback and uh, hopefully that gave you a little bit more juice to with working with web components. Thank you very much. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.